Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and today we have some Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and another episode of Dear Nero, which of course is the weekly series here on my channel where subscribers send me in fan mail and or fan questions and I do best go and answer them. We have a lot of good questions this week, so without further ado, we're just going to hop right into them with the very first question, probably the most interesting one to a lot of you. He's going to write, Dear Nero, do you believe that the 5 day Black Ops 3 beta is going to be enough time to properly understand every right and wrong in the game and do you think it's fair that the only way to actually this the beta is by pre-ordering the game keep up the good work sincerely vino from canada so vino that is definitely a very interesting question a lot of questions this week actually came in regarding the black ops 3 beta and i think it's due in large part to the fact that there's a beta trailer that came out yesterday as well as we're getting closer and closer to the actual release of black ops 3's beta so more and more people are getting interested about that topic so do i feel as though the five day black ops 3 beta time is going to be enough time to understand the game as well as do i think it's fair that we're going to be accessing the beta by pre-ordering it and you cannot access it if you don't pre-order the game they can kind of cover the second part of that i definitely think it's fair that you have to actually pre-order the game to get beta access because how else are you going to get into the beta like should everybody just be able to get into the beta for free that just seems silly the reason why they're actually doing this the reason why they're actually giving us a beta in the first place is because destiny offered you beta access in exchange for pre-ordering the game and it turns out destiny is the most pre-ordered game in the history of the world so of course call of duty is going to try and do that as well they're going to try and top that so they decided to put out a beta and they actually put it behind the pre-order paywall as well and pre-orders are really nothing guys it's like five dollars like it's it's like five dollars down on a game that you know you're gonna buy anyway so it's like is it really gonna hurt you that bad to like just pre-order the game i don't think it will and plus you'll also get some other bonuses for pre-ordering as well so i think it's definitely a fair it's a fair business strategy and that's what it is at the end of the day it's a business strategy because of the sunk cost policy they, they understand that if people pre-order a game chances are they're actually gonna go ahead and buy the game and if you actually play this beta which let's not kid ourselves here let's not kid ourselves about the Black Ops 3 beta. This is not going to be as much of a beta as it is going to be a glorified demo, right? The game itself is going to be practically finished by this point, right? The reason why they're giving us this beta, once again, is because, and this is, I guess, this is my own opinion. I guess this isn't really fact. I shouldn't, I shouldn't make it come off as if it's fact, but in my opinion, the reason why we're having this beta is because they want to increase pre-order sales. They, they saw how well it worked for Destiny, and by giving us this beta, giving us this beta for five days and giving us access to some of the weapons, some of the maps, some of the game modes and whatnot, it's just going to build more hype for the game than it already has plus it's going to make them a lot of money because they did the whole pre-order thing and because of the sunk cost policy people are more likely to actually buy the game if they pre-ordered it it's it's just a good business strategy on their end right it's definitely a good business strategy so i don't i totally think it's fair i definitely think it's fair that you have to pre-order the game to actually get access to the beta but do i think five days is going to be long enough time I do. I do think five days is going to be a long enough time to understand the game and see what's right and wrong with it, just because the game itself, it's pretty simple to figure out what's right and wrong with it. Now, a lot of people haven't been in this position like I have, but over the past three years in Call of Duty, I've gotten the game early, right? I paid money. I, some, I don't know how they did it. Probably illegally. I have no idea, but somehow people online got access to the game. They got physical copies of the Call of Duty games early, and I paid them a bunch of money, and they send me the game, and then bam, I get to play the game sometimes a week early, right? I did that for Black Ops 2, did it for Ghost, did it for Advanced Warfare, I'm going to do it for Black Ops 3 as well. And when I play the game early, right, it's usually a bunch of other YouTubers, maybe some pro players and stuff. We always have the game early together. And we usually join party chats and stuff if we recognize each other and just start hanging out and playing and stuff. But the people that get the game early, you, if you follow them on Twitter or even see some of their videos, they'll tell you right from the get. Like, within one day of playing, you can tell what is, like, right and wrong with the Call of Duty game. I remember when we were playing Call of Duty Ghost, I'm like, guys, the MSBS is broken. This gun is stupid. It's the only gun you'll ever see in any lobby. It's like a two-hit kill at any range. It's absurdly powerful, right? And it was. And that's like something that we learned like playing the game for like 20 minutes like it's very easy to kind of figure out that kind of stuff and of course they nerfed the msbs you look at advanced warfare i told you guys even early if you guys, you guys have follow me on twitter I was, before the game even came out I'm like guys in advanced warfare the submachine guns are far too weak to even be viable and they were i mean they were so weak who remembers that because of course the ace one's ridiculously good now and the uh, submachine guns have been buffed quite a number of times so they've actually gotten a lot better but who remembers how bad the smgs really were when the game first came out right that, these are things that you can like identify right away while playing the game right just right away you can tell if this gun's too powerful this gun's too weak whatever it, people are gonna, we're gonna be able to figure that out within a couple days of the beta actually being out and again i think this is going to be a glorified demo more than anything so 
most of the things in the game are already going to be finished. There's probably not going to be a lot of bugs. At least I hope there's not going to be a lot of bugs. And if there are bugs, hopefully we can find them and they can get fixed up before the game even comes out. But again, I definitely think this is just going to be more of a glorified demo than anything to try and increase uh, pre-order sales. So I definitely think five days is going to be a long enough time. And if you're lucky enough or fortunate enough, I suppose, to actually have access to a good PC or maybe two consoles, then you get 10 days worth of beta. Because if you just pre-order the game twice, like you pre-order it on the PlayStation and on the Xbox, which keep in mind that's going to cost you like $10, you get 10 days worth of beta instead of only five. So that's definitely going to be pretty cool. But yeah, I definitely think that it's fair that you have to pre-order the game to actually get access to the beta. And do I think five days is enough time? Sure, I'd like it to be longer, but I think five days is going to be enough time of essentially just going to be a demo of the game. Next question, he is going to write, Dear Nero, the thumbnail is always the same for Dear Nero, but I always wondered who that guy is. Does he have any relevance to this series or even you? If he does, please explain who the guy is. And if not, how come he is there? I'm sure you've answered this question before, but please answer again. It would be cool if you were to answer this on Dear Nero. Ari from London. So Ari, the person on the cover is Joseph Stalin. Now I will say, you're kind of wrong in your assumption that the thumbnail is always the same for Dear Nero, as you can see here from these pictures. Aha! See, there's always subtle changes. Not every single week, of course. Not every week do we have changes in the thumbnail itself. But there are some subtle changes, uh, depending on if there's a, spe like a special holiday or a special event happening that week or stuff like that. So it does change a little bit, but for the most part, it's basically going to be Joseph Stalin writing a letter. Who is Joseph Stalin? Well, he was the leader of the Soviet Union during World War II. Why is he in my thumbnail? I don't know. Uh, I saw that picture. I found it a long time ago. It, it was Joseph Stalin writing a letter. I'm like, that would be a good thumbnail for my Q&A series where people essentially send me in letters over the internet. And it's always been like that. And what's kind of neat about it is it's definitely a unique thumbnail. It's unlike any other thumbnail that you're going to see from any other YouTuber. How many YouTubers have Joseph Stalin writing a letter in their thumbnails? Like, it just doesn't seem to make any sense. And so I think it's why it kind of fits. You know, I, I have a big love of World War II. You guys know that I'm very interested in, with all the history revolving around World War II. And to see Joseph Stalin writing a letter and have a weekly Q&A and then put Dear Nero next to it. And then, of course, be able to add in a bunch of stuff depending on the day. I think it's kind of cool. I like uh, I like the thumbnail a lot. But, uh, yeah, people were always confused by that. And it's, it's kind of saddening to me, I suppose, that so many of you don't know who Joseph Stalin is. Like, if I were to show you guys, like, a picture of, like, Joseph Stalin or any other any of the other leaders from World War II, chances are a lot of you guys would be like, huh, who's that person, you know? <laughs> but so, I don't know. It's definitely a bad thing. I think you guys need to pay more attention in history class. Next question he is going to write. Dear Nero, I think I can speak for everyone when I'm saying I'm looking forward to Call of Duty Black Ops 3's beta. I guess that YouTubers like yourself will be allowed to make videos during this period, and if so, will the gameplay of Dear Nero be Black Ops 3? Also, will there be a Black Ops 3 Nuclear Saturday? Keep up the great content, and as always, have a wonderful day from Alfie in sunny England. Alfie, thank you first and foremost. Thank you for uh, wishing I have a wonderful day. I hope I have a wonderful day because it's been going great so far and hopefully everybody watching this video is having a great day so far and hopefully it just gets better as the day goes by. Another question again regarding the Black Ops 3 beta. I said there was going to be a lot of them and this is going to be a second one here of this video. Will I be making videos of it? Of course, right? So they have actually come out and said, I don't believe anyway, I don't believe they've come out and said that you can post footage of the beta, but how bad of a marketing strategy, I just hit my keyboard when I did that, how bad of a marketing strategy would that be if they were to give us a beta, right? But make it so all the YouTubers that are like essentially supporting the game, which... Don't, I'm not, don't get me wrong, I don't think YouTubers are the reason why Call of Duty is successful, but it, it's, we definitely help Call of Duty become successful by hyping up the game so much, making so many videos about it, and just kind of creating this community around it. If they were to make it so YouTubers couldn't make videos out of the beta, that would just be silly. So I'm definitely going to be uh, posting up a lot of videos of the beta, assuming we're allowed to. I'm, again, just assuming we're going to be allowed to. It would, just be, it would be a train wreck if they were to make it so we couldn't. But uh, yeah, I'll definitely be making a lot of videos. I'm going to be playing the beta like crazy. Like, just keep that in mind. I'm going to be playing that beta like crazy it is going to be insane the amount of playtime I'm going to put in that beta because I'm going to just have so much footage of it and that will hopefully last us all the way up uh, until the game itself actually comes out so I'm definitely gonna have a lot of that there which means will there be Black Ops 3 gameplay for Deer Nero probably but it probably won't be the best gameplay like my 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 average my subpar gameplays so let's say I go you know 30 and 20 or something like that well maybe I'll put that gameplay in Deer Nero who knows if <laughs> it save the actual good gameplays for you know other videos and stuff so yeah they're just 
there's definitely going to be some Black Ops 3 gameplay in Dear Near. There's going to be a lot of Black Ops 3 gameplay from the time the beta comes out all the way until the game actually makes its full release. And do I think I'll be doing a Black Ops 3 Nuclear Saturday? Can somebody confirm this for me? Because I tried Googling it. It is so hard, right? It is so hard to find accurate information on the internet. Is there even confirmed to be a nuclear in Black Ops 3? Like, I looked, tried looking it up, and if you type in, like, Black Ops 3 Nuclear, all it is is YouTube videos of people talking about Black Ops 3 and whether or not there should be a nuclear in it. It's like, oh my god. Like, I, there's no actual information out here. It's all just speculation videos, which I'm guilty of that myself. I make a lot of speculation videos, so it's definitely kind of, ha kind of hard to find that information. And so much information actually comes out about Black Ops 3 that... You know, sometimes it can be hard to keep track of all of it at once. But yeah, if there's a nuclear in Black Ops 3, maybe we do a series out of that. We'll also discuss the possibility before of doing a series where we combine all the stuff, like uh, Modern Warfare 2 nukes, Modern Warfare 3 MOAVs, uh, DNA bombs, chem strikes, all that stuff, throwing it all into one series. People submit a bunch of gameplay, and every week I pick two of the best ones, and then we make it that, um, I don't know what we would call the series, but yeah, there's definitely a possibility that I would do something like that. We will just have to see, because definitely if I do something like that, I want to get uh, like a graphics design. I should just hire a graphics designer all together. I may make a video in the future just like, hey, I would like to hire one of you as a graphics designer. Yes, I'll pay you real money, and yes, I'll be working with you often and make better thumbnails, make better backgrounds, better intro, and all this stuff, right? I think I should definitely hire a graphics designer. I think that would be pretty cool. But yeah, uh, there's definitely going to be a series next year uh, similar to what we have here with uh, DNA Saturday. I'm just not entirely positive what that series is going to be. Next question. This is actually going to be a lightning round, so it's going to be multiple questions kind of comparing to one or the other, and I basically have to pick one so it's gonna be a lightning round number one pizza or hamburgers i'll say burgers definitely modern warfare 3 or ghosts i would say oh god that's so hard uh, right now probably modern warfare 3 because i haven't played ghosts in a while and I have played modern warfare 3 recently and it wasn't really that bad soda or tea i would say tea over soda definitely although i drink both of them pretty frequently ballista or intervention probably the intervention baseball or basketball i would say baseball but i like football the most but that's not your question camaro or mustang i will say mustang over a camaro uh Cake or pie? Definitely pie, because cake is, like, dry a lot of the time. It's just not nearly as good as pie. And had, all those questions actually came from Michael in the Music City. So I like those lightning round ones. It reminds me, was it Dear Dear Episode 100? I did 100 questions, and they're all basically, like, a lightning round like that. But it wasn't, like, one or the other. It was just me answering questions really quickly. Let's type that in. Dear Nero... 100. Will it pop up if I type in Dear Nero 100? Yes, 100 questions, 100 answers. And I did that entire thing in 41 minutes. So you look at normal Dear Nero, they're like 30 minutes long. They answer like 10 questions at the most. And you look at Dear Nero episode 100, I did 100 questions in 41 minutes. So yeah, I definitely didn't take a lot of time to actually explain my reasoning behind picking things in that video. But yeah, we're definitely able to answer a lot of questions. And it's sometimes fun to do lightning rounds like that. So hopefully you guys all enjoyed it. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, my sister is going to leave for college on Tuesday, which will be yesterday if you actually picked this question for Dear Nero. I want to know if you are an only child, have a great day. This person did not leave his or her name. So person who did not leave his or her name, I am not an only child. I have a brother, but my brother is five years younger than I am. So I'm 23, that makes him 18. And yeah, I've never had a sister. I do have a lot of cousins, but uh, I only have one sibling, and that is my brother. And yes, we do look alike, although I'm a little bit taller than he is. So uh, yeah, I do have a brother. And next question, he is going to write, Dear Nero, I heard that you were talking about your sleep problems on an earlier video, and I suffer from them really bad. What do you suggest I do? Keep up the great videos, by the way. Mertz from England. So Mertz, I think there's two different kinds of uh, quote-unquote sleep problems that people had. What it sounds like you have is like a legitimate problem where it's kind of difficult for you to fall asleep. You know, their insomnia is a thing. I know there's a lot of people that like to claim they have insomnia, which I'm not trying to point fingers at anybody, but there's also a lot of people that claim that they have depression there's a lot of people that claim they have adhd just because they may show a symptom or two but there actually are a lot of people out there that actually do have insomnia like no matter how tired they are they legitimately can't sleep and it just kind of like ruins their lives it can make things really difficult i don't have that i have a problem that a lot of youtubers have and i guess you can't really call it a problem because it's definitely it's it's more of a bad habit than anything whereas when you're a youtuber and you do youtube full-time right you're your own boss and you do whatever you really want to do right if i want to stay up till 5 a.m. making videos or not making videos it's really up to me I'm my own boss right and so you'll find that a lot of people when put in that situation suddenly the first thing to go is everybody's sleep schedule I'm sure there's tons of youtubers out there if you ask any of them they've all either either do have a horrible sleep schedule or they've had a horrible sleep schedule because it's really hard to keep a schedule when you don't need to wake up you know I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to school a lot of you are going back to school actually right now maybe some of you guys are going to college maybe a lot of you guys of course are a little bit older and actually have jobs to go to work if you could choose not to have to wake up at six o'clock in the morning would you right 
Yeah. So I so I, I'm crawling out of bed at like you know 10:30, 11 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes at the at the worst of my sleep schedule, I was waking up at like six o'clock in the afternoon because I was going to bed at like you know 10 o'clock in the morning or something like that. You know, I was waking up and it was like dinner time for most people in the world, but for me, I'm like, all right, so let's go get some breakfast. <laughs> it definitely gets pretty bad. So that is what my sleep schedule is like. It changes a lot right now. I am in this phase where I am really not sleeping well. I'm waking up. I'm going to bed at like maybe three o'clock in the morning and I'm waking up maybe you know nine or ten which is you know six seven hours of sleep I do find myself getting pretty tired throughout the day so I end up like taking like a nap or something like that after I get done with my videos and such and that's what makes my sleep schedule even worse because then I'm not tired at a normal time then I end up staying up even later and it's just like this never-ending cycle of basically it's a big lack of discipline uh really for me but do I have any tips to um to help people that actually do have trouble falling asleep. I really don't. Uh, I really don't have any tips I can give you because I'm not a medical professional. I don't want to say, yeah, take sleeping pills because I don't want to encourage anybody to take pills if they're not prescribed to take them. And so, um, I don't know. I, that, that's it, it's definitely a tough one. It's definitely a tough one. And do I have a really set like set pattern of correcting my sleep schedule? I really don't. Uh, a lot of times I'll just like pull an all nighter and just be so dead tired. Then I'll sleep for 14 hours and then be good to go. But um, yeah, I really, I really don't have much advice for you besides talk to your doctor about it because there are a lot of prescription drugs out there that can actually help you out with this kind of thing. Like insomnia is kind of a widespread thing and there are a lot of cures for it. So actually uh, go talk to a medical professional about that. Don't uh, be asking YouTubers online. You would be surprised as to the amount of advice people ask me to give them. Like they, they are asking for medical advice. They're asking for relationship advice. And it's like, I am not qualified to answer any of this. <laughs> like I do not want, no, I'm not giving you advice on that. That's why usually here on Dear Nero, you'll see uh, a lot of my questions are gaming related. Cause I do feel so I'm qualified to answer those questions. I am not qualified, however, to tell you what kind of prescription drugs you should be taking. So just keep that in mind. Next question. He is going to write, Dear Nero, a few weeks ago, it was officially announced that YouTube has made a diamond play button for people with 10 million subscribers, similar to the silver play button, which you guys will know you get at 100,000 subscribers, and the gold play button, which if you guys will know you get at 1 million subscribers. My question is, what are your thoughts on this, and do you think you will ever get to 10 million and get that button yourself? You're the best YouTuber. Keep up the great work from Deal Wheels. All right, Mr. Deal Wheels, first and foremost, thank you. You said, I'm the best YouTuber. That puts, me, that puts me above and beyond everybody else. At least in your eyes, that's true. And that's a cool thing, man. So I definitely thank you so much for having that. It's such a high opinion of me because there's a lot of other YouTubers to uh, compare me to. But do I think I'll ever make it to 10 million subscribers? It's entirely possible, I suppose. I'm at, what, 350,000 something right now. The thing about it is, is, as with all things in life and all other areas of life, I suppose, there is inflation, right? If you look back at, call, at at the Call of Duty YouTube scene back in 2010 when it first came out. If you had 10,000 subscribers, you were a boss. Like, you were king of the jungle if you had 10,000 subscribers. Then it got bigger, then it got bigger, and then it got bigger. And now it's so inflated because there's so many people that are watching gaming videos on YouTube that there are literally people out there, and I'm sure you guys are subscribed to some of these people, and this is not knocking some or anything, but there's a bunch of Call of Duty YouTubers out there that have a million subscribers or more, and I've never heard of them. And I'm sure there's a lot of them that you guys haven't heard of either. Like, I could be like, hey, hey look at this guy. He has over a million subscribers. He makes Call of Duty videos. And a lot of you probably like, I've never even heard of that guy. And I'm the same way. Cause it's like, how? And, you know, it, it, there's just like such, a, such an inflation, I suppose. And it's only going to get bigger. That's the thing. More and more people are going to continue to join YouTube. More and more people are going to uh, make accounts and start subscribing to people on YouTube. So it's going to get to the point, I think, where where you're going to see somebody with a million subscribers and you're going to be like, well, that's not even really that much compared to this guy that's got way more than that, you know, because there's, again, there's a lot of inflation uh, here on YouTube. So I definitely think uh, it's possible to get there. It would, be, it would take a huge number of years, though, for me. Do I ever expect to? I don't expect to. No, um, a million, maybe. Maybe in like five years' time or something like that. Maybe with the inflation and stuff like that, with the help from that, maybe I can get to a million subscribers. But I just really take my YouTube channel one day at a time. I don't usually try to plan too far ahead especially for things like that but what's my opinion on the diamond play button it's cool i think youtube should um give more more things out to youtubers you know because of course without the youtubers youtube wouldn't be here and because uh, it's all um it's all content it's all cre it's all content that's created by the creators like there's a lot of people on youtube that make the videos and without us making the videos what would youtube be right it's it's not like youtube themselves make the videos of course they do have some youtube funded stuff but for the most part, all the content you see on YouTube is actually just made by the creators, right? So without the creators, there is no YouTube. So I think it's cool when they 
when they give us some kind of like incentive to try and continue to try which of course we already have the incentive for a lot of people if you have over 100,000 subscribers chances are for a lot of us anyway uh, that YouTube is kind of like your thing it's kind of like your gig it's your full-time job and so that's obviously incentive enough or, or just the incentive to uh, make good content and engage with people from all around the world which I think people don't take uh, take into consideration enough the fact that these are all real people from all around the world that's one of my favorite things about Dear Nero is going through and like reading all like from where all these people are from the first question was vino in canada second question was airy from london third question was alfie in england uh fourth question was michael from music city fifth question not leave his or her name and uh fifth question was mertz from england this question is from a guy named deal wheels who doesn't actually say where he's from the next question is going to be from ludwig in sweden and the final question is going to be from abraham in michigan like just all these people from all around the world like i think is such a cool thing so, I, will I ever get to 10 million subscribers? I don't know. Will I ever get to a million? I don't know. Will I get to a half a million? I don't know. But it was my opinion on the silver play button. I like the idea of the silver play button. I think it's cool when they give out rewards like that for stuff that we're trying to do anyway. It's basically like, hey, here you go. This is for the best of the best. A diamond play button. Go ahead. And here it is for you. And I'm, I'm ecstatic about it. I, mean, like I have my silver play button for 100,000 subscribers. And I love that thing. If I ever make it to a million, I would be ecstatic to get the gold one. And uh, yeah, they're just little rewards, I suppose, for doing stuff that we would have done already, which is try to make the best videos that we can. So it's like, yeah, thank you, YouTube. You guys actually care. Next question. He is going to write, Dear Nero, last Thursday, Blizzard announced their new expansion for World of Warcraft. My question is, did you watch the stream? And if so, what are your thoughts on Legion? Thanks for all the great content. Ludwig from Sweden. Did I say Ludvi Ludvig? That is, it's L-U-D-V-I-G Ludvig is how, is how I think you pronounce it. It could be Ludvig. Yeah, Ludvig. I'm hoping I pronounce that right. I'm so bad at pronouncing names. Uh, what is my opinion on the new WoW expansion? I didn't watch the live stream, but I watched a bit of it after the fact. And it looks cool. Legion looks pretty cool. I like the idea of class order halls. I like the fact that uh, it's basically a whole bunch of new stuff for you to do. If you guys know I do play WoW, it's a very fun game. I play a rogue for the most part. And the new class orders sound awesome with the exception that they're going to be putting the rogues, which again is the class I primarily play. They're going to be playing us in the sewers? Like that's, that's that's where our class hall is going to be, which is like going to be like where where, where our, everyone from your class likes to hang out and stuff. Like all of us rogues are going to be down there in the sewers. Like why? Why couldn't you put us somewhere better? Like all the other classes get this really cool place to go and they have to put us down in the sewers. That sucks. Um, the artifact weapons, I don't know if I like the artifact weapons. I mean, it's going to be cool. It's going to be a whole new talent tree and stuff, but it looks like it's going to be... <sighs> I don't really know how to describe. It. I don't like that they're taking like really heavy lore weapons because of course there's a lot of lore within the within the Warcraft universe. Uh, it, it basically taking like all these lore based weapons and just giving them to everybody. So I don't know if that's gonna be really that great, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. It's a whole new expansion and a lot some new stuff to do. So definitely it's gonna be pretty cool. And Warlords, while it was fun, it definitely had a lack of things to do. So hopefully uh, this new expansion will kind of expand upon that. Get it? expansion? Ah, get it? I hope you got it. Well, next and final question, ladies and gentlemen gentlemen he is going to write dear Nero you mentioned in your video your PlayStation 4 first impressions video that people play casually and not as competitive as on the Xbox one do you think that since competitive Call of Duty is moving to the PlayStation 4 that the PS4 community will play more competitively keep up the great work and hopefully you'll read this on your next dear Nero Abraham from Michigan so Abraham I want to kind of preface this by kind of correcting you a little bit here so that was my PS4 first impressions video and that's exactly what it was it was my impressions video now I did say and it, it's true it's in the video as part of my first impressions of the PlayStation 4 while playing Advanced Warfare and kind of comparing the communities between the PlayStation and the Xbox One communities. I did notice that you know, it seemed a lot easier on the PlayStation that people did, weren't as tryhard. They weren't as serious. You know, everything, everyone's kind of like running around with a sniper, running around with goofy weapons. Everyone just seemed to be very laid back. No one had a mic in. We're always having a good time, you know. And that was a, that was a, that was definitely a big contrast while I was used to on the Xbox One where, seen, where things seemed to be a lot more competitive. I even mentioned in that video that one of the reasons why I think it's a lot more casual is I'm on a fresh account. I'm playing Advanced Warfare, you know, so many months in, and I'm on a fresh account. I have no DLC. I have, like, barely any stats for the skill-based matchmaking to really kind of kick in. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of factors in there that definitely could have come into play. Whereas on the Xbox One, I'm somebody that has several days of playtime. I have, like, a two-kill-death ratio. I have a really high score per minute. You know, I'm, like, up there in the top tier of skill-based matchmaking on the Xbox. And then going over to the PlayStation, where I don't even have an account yet, and I'm, like, on a fresh account, level one going in there. Of course, and we matched up with a lot easier players. I mentioned that in the video. Video. And I'm not entirely convinced that maybe one platform is a lot more casual than the other. Although it has been said for a number of years that you know people on the Xbox are a lot more serious than people on the PlayStation. Now 
uh, admittedly, a lot of that is coming from people that do play on the Xbox. They're saying that the PS4 is for casuals. And of course, people on the PlayStation are like, oh, yeah, people on the Xbox are for casuals. It's always like this kind of fanboy war where people are just kind of yapping back and forth to each other, right? Do I think one is necessarily more casual than the other? I don't. I really have no way of being able to test that. Although, I will say that a lot of people say that the Xbox is of course, a bit more competitive. I think a big reason for that and a big source of that is the fact that competitive Call of Duty has been on the Xbox for a number of years now. Now, of course, it's going to be moving over to the PlayStation, and a lot of people are upset about that. Now, will I think that's actually going to change the community over there? It's going to change it for sure a little bit, but I don't think it's going to change things too much, because I, I don't think you can take something where you're going to be taking essentially all of the pro Call of Duty players and a lot of the big fans of the competitive Call of Duty scene and moving them all to a new platform. I, it'd be, it seems like it'd be silly to say that it's not going to somehow change change the meta of that platform, but at the same time, that's going to be a small number of players in the community versus like the millions, the tens of millions of people that are going to be playing on that platform. So I don't think it's going to change things around too much. I don't think if you're somebody who's been playing on the PlayStation forever, I don't think this year during Black Ops 3, you're going to suddenly see a giant spike in competition and things are going to be like way too difficult for you as compared to what they've been for previous years. I don't think it's going to happen, but I do think like the league play equivalent that we're going to see in Black Ops 3 is going to be a bit more difficult than what we've seen in previous years in the PlayStation because I think a lot of competitive Call of players, pros and amateurs are going to be on the PlayStation now as compared to what they were previously on, which is on the Xbox. That's definitely going to be a bit different. I will say that for a short period of time, there was this uh, little hashtag that's going on called uh, hashtag Xbox or we riot where a lot of fans were very upset. Now, these fans were primarily competitive Call of Duty fans, ones that maybe aren't necessarily pro, like they're not making a lot of money from competitive Call of Duty, it's just a passion or a hobby of theirs. And a lot of people are really upset that they're moving over to the PlayStation, because these guys have spent years now trying to get better on the Xbox, right? They've been spent years now getting better with the Xbox controller. They've spent a lot of money, be it on the Xbox Live, be it on their Xbox 360, on their games, on their Xbox One, their games for the Xbox One, uh, their control freaks, their scuff controllers, their squid grips, whatever it is, their headsets, whatever it is they're using, right they spent a lot of money and a lot of time trying to they've invested a lot of time and money into the xbox platform then for the call of duty to come around and say yeah so you guys we're going over to playstation now you guys gotta go over there if you want to play competitive call of duty or be a part of the competitive call of duty scene that just really i'm sure that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way which is definitely a bad thing but at the end of the day this is what happens when there's a console war there's never a winner when it comes to a console war and of course call of duty themselves they're basically picking whoever gives them the most money right for a number of years now it was xbox Microsoft is giving them the most money. It's like, oh, yeah, exclusive stuff for Xbox. We had the Call of Duty over there, DLC first over there. Oh, yeah. And this year, it's like, oh, Sony's going to be giving us a lot of money this year. So, Sony, you get the DLC first. Sony, you get competitive Call of Duty. Like, it's all it's all just about money at the end of the day because Call of Duty is a business at the end of the day. While it's been, a, it's been a hobby and a passion for a lot of us for a number of years now, at the end of the day, Call of Duty is still a business and they are not going to be perfect. They are going to do what is going to make them the most money. And that generally is going to trump what the community themselves wants. In a perfect world, in a perfect world, somehow you could take people that play on the PlayStation and people play on the Xbox and just have it not matter. Have like this universal machine, like some kind of a PC, because you can play with the Xbox controllers on a PC, right? I'm pretty sure about that, and I don't know if you can do it for PlayStation controllers, can never tried it. But what if there's somehow a way that people you know, that played on the Xbox, that played on the PlayStation, they could all just play together in the same game, regardless of what controller that they were using, you know? That would just be great if that were the case. That way there wouldn't have to be the segregation between people that play on the Xbox, people that play on the PlayStation. If you wanted to be a part of competitive Call of Duty, you could just be a part of competitive Call of Duty and don't, not have to make it such a big deal. That would just be fantastic. But ladies and gentlemen, that has been this week's episode of Dear Nero. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. And if you did, please be sure to leave a ring where you guys feel it be deserves. And if you guys would like to submit your questions for next week's episode of Dear Nero, simply send me a personal message here on YouTube. How you go about doing that is just go to my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Cinema. From there, you'll find different tabs. From there, go to the About tab, scroll down to the Send Message button, and from there, send your message for next week's episode of Dear Nero. Keep in mind, I do check these messages on Wednesday, the day that I record the video and the day that I actually post the video. So if if you send your question at any time between this week's Dear Nero and next week's Dear Nero, it will be read. And if it's a good question or a question I feel as though would work well within the show, I will feature it on the show. And of course, be sure to write your name and kind of where you're from, like Joe from Pennsylvania or Andy from Idaho or wherever it is it would be. That way you can kind of tell, hey, that was my question. Hey, I heard my name in the video. That'd be cool. It's just a little fun thing we do every week with Dear Nero. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Remember to leave a rating. I hope you guys all... Have a wonderful day.